Welcome back to Talk and Tech. Home team Brandon Leak, the all-time leading passer, the College Football Hall of Famer, the Super Bowl champion Joe Hamilton, Coach Sean Nerney. We're here to talk a little tech as they get ready to take on the Duke Blue Devils up the road in Durham, North Carolina. Gentlemen, before we get to that, we saw the Jackets at home when last we saw them. North Carolina came in. We were looking for a team that was going to be a little bit surly because they lost a close game to Clemson. I thought the Jackets competed very well, and we saw something that I think a lot of people have been looking to see. Yes, home team, I think we can look, uh, I guess, in the crystal ball and see what it, what it will look like in three to five years. Offense dropping back concepts uh, in the passing game. You know, we also need the run game to develop, but that'll come. You see the scheme. And also, even when you go to a pro style offense now, some options, some RPOs can get mixed in there as well. We did see defensively, you know, corners being pressed uh, uh, and moving around scheme wise. I thought they took a little step back as far as, you know, uh, uh, being physical, taking some opportunities in the pass game. They were ranked fifth. No, but that freshman from North Carolina took advantage of that and exposed us to a little bit. But overall, James Graham, offensively, what you're trying to do and what you want recruits to see and your fans to see, I love where they were headed at and what they put on film last week. Sean Nerney. Yeah, I mean, I was rather encouraged. I mean, defensively, you know, I think you hung with them in the first half, but at the end of the day, UNC up front, that offensive line just wore Georgia Tech yes. down by the end of the game. The secondary played well in the first half, but... You know, like I said, I mean, four quarters of facing that UNC uh, uh, offensive line will wear you down. On the offensive side of the ball, listen, we talked about it a week ago. You know, let's unleash James Graham, give him a legit chance to go out there and get in the flow of the game, get a rhythm going. And I liked what I saw. I mean, this is a guy that, you know, he keeps his eyes downfield when there's trouble in the pocket. And there, you know, until we get you know, the offensive line solidified, there's going to be trouble in the pocket. But I was pleased to see the way that he kept his eyes down the field and the way that, you know, they were able to keep the, for the most part, more so in the second half, I think, kept the offense balanced with both a run and a passing game. And, you know, to me, from what I from what I saw, it's kind of like what you said looking at the crystal ball. I could see into the future yeah. when you get a few more pieces, especially up on the line of scrimmage, where this Georgia Tech offense has some find some real success. Yes, and real quick, I've been there, guys. I've been there. I've been there as a redshirt freshman. I've been there starting my first game in, in NC State or at NC State. I've been there starting my first game home as a redshirt freshman. Not putting up a great season at all. Seven touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Hearing some boos. Is this the guy? But what happened, Coach O'Leary, and then the next year, Coach Fiji came in, and I learned the game. Not everybody that's coming into college is Trevor Lawrence. A two or tongue of Viola coming into the locker room, throwing spirals, reading defenses, and those type uh, type things develop. And to your point, going forward, that is something you can build around. What type of team we want to look like, this is the team. So not, that's not discounting Jordan Yates or any other guys, but it's something to where if they're earning it and they can go forward, have them do it. Uh, to that point, um, what I like, score dictated a lot of what you're doing. I just like 24 passes, couple of touchdown passes, young wide receivers getting into a flow and a rhythm. Those were the things that I took out of the offense. You brought up a name. Will we see Yates on the back of a jersey on the football field for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets? You can find out a lot of things. Play guys four games and not have to burn a red shirt. He made it to the above the line chart. It will be interesting to me to see if the young man will get any reps at all on the field in the Jackets game this week or one down the line. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, you know, I think you, you, you need to take advantage of the fact that he has four games to play going into next year because, you know, I fully expect going into next year, you know, they'll call it an open competition. I think it'll be James Graham. It'll be Jordan Yates going at it. Now, I think Jordan Yates probably has the upper hand. I think he's got more, more time under a, an offense where he's passed the ball a lot more when he was a, a lead in the Milton squad to a state title a year ago. So, but, you know, but I, I wouldn't mind seeing him. And it was great to see, and I was kind of shocked to see the fact that he made the, the above the line uh, chart. But, you know, you see him on game day. Anytime they're, the offense is on timeout, they're on the sideline. Yes. Yates is right there with the clipboard. He's, you know, he's right there, part of the huddle, figuring things out. So it wouldn't shock me to see him at some point. It wouldn't shock me either, you know, Nerny, but it's a fine line. And the only reason I'm saying it's a fine line, I want to get your thoughts. You got a guy in James Graham now needs all of his reps. Right. He's trying to, you know, you know, get experience and see more coverages. And also a guy in Jordan Yates that needs reps. How are you going to do that? Will you, in my opinion, what you do then is you 
strategically say that Jordan Yates, you'll be going in on the third drive of the second quarter? Or are you going to be coming out of the second half and maybe in the fourth quarter have a package where you're going to have a series that way? Because you don't want to have James Graham on the football field having every throw he's going to make, looking to the side and seeing who's warming up, grabbing the ball tighter because he's if he makes a mistake, then he's going to be yanked. So it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a fine line there, but I do agree with you, and that's going to premier, uh, go through the entire football team, if you start playing these guys, imagine the level of competition during practice to have everybody else get playing time. And one more thing that I saw on Saturday that I think we had talked about was Tobias Oliver I saw lining up at, at wide receiver, and I think we'll see more of that. I, you know, I think they were just kind of experimenting. Obviously, he's yes. got to learn all the plays yes. from the receiver standpoint, but you saw him line up with James Graham under center on on Saturday. That That is certainly, you know, Yates is, is to be determined, but, you know, having Tobias out there, the wide out, with James Graham under center, I expect to see that. Coming up this week, up the road to go to Durham to take on the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, they're going to be a little bit agitated. They lost a close game to Pitt last week. I always like it when a team wins and you're going in there and they might not prep as much. They might overlook, ha-ha, here comes a team we think we can handle. Now that they lost, they're going to be even more focused, yelled at and cussed at a little bit more up there. What's important, I think if they play, if the Jackets play and come out the way they played against North Carolina, whose front is a little better than Duke's up front, you might have yourself a chance when the third quarter starts to be in a game that might be winnable for the offense or for the defense. And I think you just got to stay aggressive. I mean, listen, we're, we're talking about this entire season's about progressing from one week to another. Yes. We saw a big step taken by the offense, uh, you know, a week ago with James Graham under center. Build upon it. I mean, defensively, listen, the defensive message has got to be we got to be tougher this week. Okay, we, we got our butt whooped. There's a size disadvantage on the line of scrimmage for UNC. But this week, you know, the front seven for Georgia Tech, they got, they got, I know Curry had 16 tackles, but the rest of those guys in that front seven, they need to buckle down and be a little bit more physical. Yeah, and I like David Curry a lot. He's a, he's a tremendous leader. However, uh, I think his, his skill set is a little bit limited. Right. When you get hustled and all about all about all all around play and enthusiasm, he brings that, and that's good for you to see. I want to go at the little things. Do not give those guys any breaks as far as turnovers on the road. You know, don't have the red zone turnovers, okay? And last week we had a lot of third and long opportunities that we were uh, that we allowed North Carolina to take advantage of. So with that being said, you guys are not going to hear me for the rest of the season talking about whether we can beat Duke or not. You know, our winning is going to be coming with how we play, how we stick together, not beating ourselves, finding our, uh, our identity, and moving forward that way. So I'm very, very uh, excited about this weekend on the road. And remember now, James Graham gets another one, one of those check boxes as far as starting on the road now. And that's our discussion for this week. We'll see you next week. Make sure you always check us out here and make sure you check out the Sports X and 680 The Fan for all kinds of interviews and info. He is Joe Hamilton. He is Coach Sean Nerney. I'm home team. We'll see you next week talking tech.